I'm Troy Kirby with Linwood Today with a quick look at the 2021 Washington State Legislative Session. The Senate held a weekend floor session debating in gross substitute Senate Bill 5096, which would create a 7% capital gains tax. The bill was approved narrowly, 25 to 24, moving on to the House for consideration. With the rise of Microsoft and Amazon, Tableau, Real Networks, Adaptive, and hundreds of other global thought-leading companies, we put on the table a recognition that we have something special here in terms of our state's quality of life. Why are those companies here? They're here for an educated workforce, access to nature, uh, a respect for individual civil liberties, uh, and quality public infrastructure, and a healthy business environment. Mr. President, we don't have to go to the extremes to have this level of inequity in our tax system to be pro-business, to be pro-innovation, to be pro-technology. It's not about California. It's not about New York. It's about Washington State. And one of our competitive advantages in Washington State was that we had no income tax on capital gains. That means ensuring that we have the resources that we all can thrive. And for far too long, that burden has been put on the working class families. People who have been deemed essential during this pandemic are paying a higher tax rate than those who are profiting from it. Let's talk about something else the study tells us. It tells us this regressivity analysis doesn't apply to the vast majority of Washingtonians. If your income is between $25,000 a year and $250,000 a year. You are almost directly at the national average. We have talked a lot about disparities this session. We have talked about racial disparities, economic disparities, and I would like to highlight geographic disparities today. I have greatly appreciated the debate and discussion that we have had on this bill here today. But the truth of the matter is that this bill does not impact each of our districts equally. There are many of us who are looking down the road, a far piece. There are many of us who understand the ultimate goal, which is a statewide income tax. And you know what, Mr. President, 10 times the people of this state have recognized it too. Now don't misunderstand me. There are four senators in this chamber whose constituency is just hunky-dory with an income tax. And you know what? They are representing their constituency here today, and God bless them for that, because they're doing their job. But you know what, Mr. President? On the map, my district is always a deep, dark red of, no, we don't want this. The House held a weekend floor session as well, debating HB 1236 concerning landlord-tenant eviction law. The bill was approved by a vote of 54-44, moving on to the Senate for consideration. Imagine if you were told today that you had to be out of your home by the end of this month. Stuck in a pandemic, nowhere to go, your savings depleted. If you've had to do it, you know just how stressful it is. Washington state law allows landlords to evict a month-to-month -month renter with a 20-day notice without even telling a tenant why. This bill ultimately will make it so that um, people will no longer want to rent anymore. They will sell those homes and our housing crisis will get worse. Uh, Madam Speaker, I served as a council member in my hometown of Federway for three years. And during that time, I was witness to a multitude of, of issues of discrimination and retaliation and degradation and every other kind of Asian in the eviction process. Uh, some landlords went as far as even using renovations for a loophole to displace families that they no longer wanted as tenants. Madam Speaker, if this bill passes, it will drive small landlords, mom and pop landlords out of the market. They won't be able to afford all these mandates, regulations, and the financial outlay that it's going to take to be able to comply with all of these new regulations and policies. There's been a lot of debate 
on protecting landlords. Matter of fact, Madam Speaker, it's been six hours that we've been listening to how we protect landlords. But I want to redirect our attention to what this legislation is really all about. It says it in the title. This legislation is about protecting residential tenants. Well, I didn't grow up with a silver spoon. I didn't have all the advantages that some people think I do. Um, my family has been afforded the opportunity to live part of the American dream, which is to own a rental property. My, my parents are truly mom and pops. And my mom, with her rental property, is living off of that money as part of her retirement. But she needed my help. She needed my help because there was a point in time where we had to allow our tenants to leave early because of the pandemic. And so there was no income. So, you know, to say that there aren't landlords who aren't making sacrifices, I truly know it from personal experience. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Been a long debate. And Madam Speaker, as many in this body are probably exhausted as I am, and I'm sure you are, Madam Speaker. There is an exhaustion that is also coming over all those who are in the housing provider realm, big and small, corporate, mom and pops. It doesn't matter. There's a singular common thread. They're all providing housing. Thank you for watching the Daily Legislative Report by Linwood Today, covering the 2021 legislative session.